What's going on Legionnaires and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you're new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button, hit that notification bell and make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content we have coming out. Now for this video, we're going to be diving into the Infinite Frontier Batman Urban Legends issue number two. Now if you haven't been keeping up with this line or the Infinite Frontier line as a whole, go ahead and check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It's going to get you completely caught up on everything that's been going on in this line. Now this is going to be a long video. We got a lot to unpack. We have Batman Urban Legends as well as some Red Hood, Grifter, and the Outsiders. And with all of these awesome stories also comes a lot of amazing writers. Now there's a lot of them here. We could sit here and list them all day. But I'm just going to roll the credits here for a second. I'm going to let you guys see exactly who's writing each of these stories. You can go check them out. See if the artist or the writer is something you're interested in doing. Or someone that you're interested in looking into a little bit deeper. Now with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright guys, so as we get into issue number two. We, we pick up exactly where we left off with Red Hood blowing this guy away. This guy pushed Red Hood to his absolute limit. Mixed with his trauma from childhood, he just couldn't help himself. He snapped and he killed the guy in cold blood. And this is when he talks to Barbara and tells her that he messed up. He's at the location that she had given him and he just lost it. He snapped and he broke. And we see Jason Todd fall down to the ground as rain pours down around him. And then we're taken to a childhood memory. A memory of his mother giving him some money to get out of the apartment for a little bit. To go away while her drug dealer came over. Now he knew this was money to bribe him to get out of here. And so she could do some drugs. And he, he kind of to, tries to put up a little bit of a fight with it. But she insists that he just doesn't understand because of his age. And as he leaves his apartment, he sees the dealer making his way up the stairs. Now this dealer tries to make some small talk with him, but he's not having it. And he tells the guy to just F off. And this is where the man gets tough with him and shoves him against the, against the wall. Pulls out a knife and threatens him. You know, more or less telling him, you know, if he's gonna, he's gonna be talking that way, he needs to be able to back it up. And then tells him to run along because his mom needs her quote unquote medicine. And this is where we're taken to present day. And in present day we see a van hauling butt down the road with Sidney Page and some of his associates. And as they're making their way down the road this is when they hear a voice. A voice from Batman telling Sidney that Batman is severely disappointed in him. You know he told him to stop doing crime. And now Batman is back for him. And we see the vehicle screech to a stop. And Sydney just kind of bail out and try to get out of here. But it's too late. Batman's already here. And we see an amazing display. And Batman dismantling and, and taking these guys down. Staying in the shadows. And they can't even touch him. They can't even see him. Now with Sydney sitting here on his knees. He goes ahead and goes over to question him. And asks where the Scarecrow is. And where he's hiding out. But Sidney tells him, you know, he's not working for Scarecrow anymore. Scarecrow died. And with everything going on, with, with there not a lot of money going around, he went and worked for Mr. Freeze. Since he had escaped Arkham Asylum, you know, he really felt like that was his best bet for work. And this is when he gets in contact with Oracle and lets her know that Scarecrow is currently inactive, but his gang still is active and they're working for Mr. Freeze. And this is where Oracle tells him that Jason Todd is probably going to need some help. He's probably in trouble. Now this is where we pick up at the Red Hood's apartment. And he's sitting here with this kid Tyler. And the kid right now, he's scared. He doesn't know what's going on. He, you know, he kind of wants to see his mom. And Jason just doesn't know what to do. You know, he can't take care of this kid. But he also doesn't want to put him in the system. He also finds himself kind of in the shoes that Batman's in. You know, he doesn't want to be that. His dad w was scum. Tyler's dad is scum. His mom, she may not be able to even make it out of this. And if that's the case, this kid, he's going to be an orphan. And then Jason Todd is going to, to be responsible for him. Or at least that's how he feels. You know, he's so young. He doesn't want him to have to see the horrors of the world that are really out there. Unlike he did. And this is where we're taken back to the past again. And we see him sitting outside of his apartment waiting 
for the drug dealer to leave. Now the drug dealer had done some drugs with his mother, probably ended up passing out and so it took much longer than usual. You know this drug dealer's talking smack to him, just being mean and cruel. And as the guy goes to leave walking down the stairs, Kid Jason, you know, he's had enough. He finally snaps and goes and pushes the guy down the stairs and he tumbles and it doesn't seem like he gets up. You know, but Tyler doesn't have to take that route. Tyler has a chance and Jason feels like he might actually be able to help him. Now, while he's in the middle of all this thought process going on, trying to figure out what he's going to do, this is when Tyler lets him know that his helmet it is talking to him and it's saying that Batman wants to talk to him and that he's here. And this is where Jason, you know, kind of panics and he starts searching around the house and this is when he sees Batman in the corner. And Batman lets him know, you know, the police are cleaning up your mess, including that body. And tells him, you know, I warned you. And Jason, you know, his blood boiling, he's just like, I can't, I can't take it. Like, can you hear yourself? You're calling this your town. You and your moral code. It goes right out the window the second I step across municipal borders. You know, the guy was hurting people and he, he was just going to do it again. And this is when we start to see things get physical. And Jason, you know, with his impulses, he can't stop himself. And he takes his elbow and thrusts it into Batman's face. And this is when these two start duking it out. Now Red Hood, he knows this is a bad idea. This is a bad idea from the get-go, but I can't help it. Because Batman just gets under his skin. Just drives him crazy. You know, his acting like a god. His all-knowing, all-seeing. When really, you know, he's just another failed parent. At least that's how Jason sees him. But as this fight continues on... Jason, you know, he gets the beat down, and Batman just whoops his butt. But this is when Tyler runs into the room and tells Batman to stop, to leave him alone because he's one of the good guys. He's the Red Hood. And Jason hugs the kid and tells him everything is going to be alright. Now, that will be the end of that story. This is where we're going to be picking up with the Outsiders. Now, we're waking up in Japan, and a lot has gone on with the Outsiders, but we see Rex has been knocked out. And he's slowly starting to come to, remembering everything. And we see Black Lightning stretching him out. And Black Lightning then, you know, fills him in on everything that's been going on. You know, Rex wants to know where Katana is, where where she where she went. Now, all the outsiders have have an implant that gives location vitals and distress beacons. This is something Batman helped him out with because everybody was getting picked off and used for, you know, control experiments or whatever the case may be. So to avoid that, everybody now has like a tracker on them. Now, Katana's went active about 10 minutes ago and given what they know about her, she probably is in a pretty dicey situation. And this is where we see Katana going against the forces of Shiori, her mother-in-law. And we see her fight. We see her be formidable and strong. But the issue is, her katana no longer has a soul. The sword is empty. And she's been brought here to explain herself. Why her husband's soul is no longer there. Why her son's soul is lost. And this is where Katana, she tries to explain herself. But her mother-in-law, she's not having it. You know, she gave her most beloved item and the hopes that she would do what's right for it. But she believes that his soul isn't lost, that his soul had left her because something has changed within her. And he left to avoid a greater heartbreak, to avoid the inevitable. When Katana moves on, and it seems that she's been getting very close with Black Lightning. Now, she tries to profess that it has nothing to do with him. But she doesn't believe that. And she believes that her husband didn't believe that as well. Now, she vows to find her husband, but it's not enough. And she vows that she is going to kill Black Lightning for betraying her husband. Now, this is when Black Lightning and Rex land outside of the building. And we see all of the forces standing against them. And Black Lightning telling them, you know, this is your last chance. I'm going to give you guys this opportunity to walk away. But one way or another, I'm getting through to Katana. And this is where we see Black Lightning and Rex charge full force into the opposing forces. Now, this is where we pick up with our last part of this issue. And this part is going to be following grifter 
Now we pick up in Gotham City years ago and we have Cole Cash hooked up to a bunch of, of medical machines and Lucius Fox is entering the room. Now Lucius Fox goes to introduce himself but Cash's response you know to, to any kind of any kind of greeting is him asking it, uh, if he if he should be even alive right now and Fox tells him you know Team 6 had been ambushed by Mr. Freeze and members of a terrorist organization known as the Cobra Cult. Luckily, Wonder Woman and Superman had arrived in time and they were able to save his life. And through the, the technology and wealth of Bruce Wayne, Cole Cash is still sitting here breathing today. And it's actually pretty remarkable considering he had been shot 16 times. And this is where Cole, you know, he asks about his brother, where he is and how they're going to have, you know, a good laugh about all of this once they they see each other again. But this is when Fox lets him know that his brother didn't make it and hands him a box with the grifter mask inside saying that he wanted him to have this. Now this is hard for Fox to tell him but the the operation that he underwent there was only enough material for one of them to survive and so they had to choose who the better candidate was and that just so happened to be Cole. And so obviously we can see how this definitely grinds his gears and he tells Fox to just get the F out of the room. Now we pick up in Gotham present day and Cole and Fox are in the middle of their their truck being flipped over after it was hit by a semi and as it finally slows down and comes to a stop Cole throws on his grifter mask and tells Lucius that he needs to stay inside the vehicle until he tells him that it's all clear. Now grifter making his way outside the vehicle he starts taking on all of these little goons that were sent after them. One of them coming at him with an axe. But at the end of the day these guys are absolutely no match for him. And he just wipes the floor. But this is when he doesn't realize that he actually got nicked. Got nicked on the neck and he's bleeding out pretty bad here. And this is when we pick up a little bit later with some paramedics sitting here trying to patch him up. Now they want to take him to the hospital, but he tells Fox that he needs to go first. That he'll wait for the next one. He's going to deal with the police and everybody else that comes forth. Now the police arrive and they immediately just want to arrest him. Throw him down to his knees, throw him in some handcuffs, and he tries to tries to reason with them and tell them like, whoa, whoa man, hold on, like, I'm just waiting for the next ambulance, I'm bleeding out pretty bad here, and they're confused, they're like, what are you talking about next ambulance? We're the only ambulance, the call only came in a minute ago. And this is when Grifter realizes that Fox has just been kidnapped. And this is where we pick up inside the ambulance and Fox is being kidnapped. Now they're trying to make their escape. They're hightailing it out of here. But this is when we see Rifter on a police motorcycle come flying through the window and kills both of them like it's absolutely nothing. And then we're taken to a few nights later. And we have Cole sitting here on a bench and an individual comes up to greet him. This individual kind of looking for something, looking for someone. He's looking for Grifter specifically. And this individual that's being all cloak and dagger is none other than the Toy Man. Now, before they can even have a conversation, first the Toy Man's thrown off that he's not wearing a mask because, you know, a fear of the Batman and so on and so forth. But what they see up on the rooftop is the Red Hood. And the Toy Man is scared. He's terrified right now and takes off. And Red Hood jumps down. Now Grifter tries to go and say something to the Red Hood. But Red Hood quickly gives him a punch to the face. And just tells him to stay out of the way. Because right now he's trying to take down Toy Man. And Red Hood turning his back on Grifter. Grifter picks up a trash can. And chucks it and hits Red Hood in the back. And we see these two start duking it out. And Red Hood telling him, you know, I'm not here for you, but you are working with the Toy Man. If you're going to work with the Toy Man, then you're going to go down with the Toy Man as well. And he pulls out his pistol and starts shooting at him. And Grifter's just like, oh crap, like, since when did superheroes start using guns? But these guys, this guy, you know, he does. And they start tussling, and it looks like Red Hood is getting the upper hand. But this is when we see a train coming. And it looks like Red Hood is about to get derailed. But this is when he wakes up with a sticky note on his head saying borrow your gun and $100. Return the gun, keep the money. XOXO Superman. And we see him waking up, looking over to his side to find the toy man has a bullet in his chest. And that will be the end of this issue.
so let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Personally, I thought all of this was a lot of fun. I'm thoroughly enjoying the Batman and Red Hood story. That stuff is top-notch, 100%. Some of my favorite stuff coming out right now. I, I really do love seeing the character growth of Jason Todd. Especially in this time era in his life, it's such a, a hard spot to be. And we're seeing this kid Tyler again, and I'm really hoping that he's going to be a recurring character that maybe pops up in the Teen Titans Academy. I'm telling you guys, he's going to be the freaking Blue Hood. It's going to happen. But yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you have not yet, please do me a favor, subscribe to this channel, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the content we have coming out, and until the next breakdown.